Hi, everybody. So hopefully you'll be able to see and hear me pretty soon. How is everybody this evening? I'll type up something to see if I can see your comments hopefully tonight. So how is everybody tonight? Oh, hi, everybody. Oh, people are coming in. Awesome. Make sure you say something when you come in that I that I know you're hearing me okay. Cool. Everybody's hearing me all right. So everything's going okay tonight. You never know with Facebook. They they have a tendency to um it is a toss up. <laughs> every night, every Sunday I think, "Oh, gee, is it going to work tonight?" <laughs> How is everybody tonight? Boy, it's been windy today. I've been sitting in my sewing room working all day and um it was really windy. That I didn't have the TV on, so I could hear the wind blowing all day. Oh my goodness, a second. I gotta scroll down so I can see people's messages. Oh hi everybody. All kinds of people coming in. Hello everybody. So I have to say this has been probably one of my favorite Kimberbell projects. I mean this this pillow. Now the one I'm gonna make for this class, I'm actually gonna make a, a table or a, a, a wall hanging. But um, I have to say this has been one of my favorite projects. So here's a done one. You've seen it, I think. I'll, I had a good picture of it. It's too hard to show you because it's so big. But, um, but we're going to do, let me see, i got to find that. We're going to do this block tonight. We're going to do this house block down here tonight. But this has been so fun to work on, and the blocks go very quickly. Like I came home from work yesterday, and I did all of the blocks, except for the one we're going to do tonight. And then today I put the whole top together, except for the last little panel, because I had to, you know, finish one block. So um, it goes very quickly. It's very easy. Um, there are some piece blocks, so you have to piece a few traditional blocks in this one. The little, um, where are they here? You know, the little pinwheels. So these little pinwheels. There's there's two big ones and two and three smaller ones. So. But I have to say this has been one of my favorite projects, um, Kimberbell projects. It was so fun. And the other thing that was really fun, I've never, I haven't made these for years, but you know, those, you have to make yo-yos on these. And I, ha I made those three yo-yos, and those were really fun to do. And um, you put buttons on, and um, all this darling organza, you know, you make all these ruffles with the organza. Um, it's so much fun. So um, most of you that bought the CD from the store, you know, got the embellishment kit. So all of these little extras are in your embellishment kit. And what we're using tonight, like the felt, we're going to use some felt, some mylar, and some, um, and some, um, oh, uh, heat transfer vinyl, the, the glitter vinyl. Those are all in your embellishment kit. I got all the stuff for this right before... The embellishment kits came out so i had to buy all the extra st stuff separately so i could get it all but i had to buy each little piece separate <laughs> so you got it all in one little baggie which is really nice i like those embellishment kits it, it makes it a lot easier to get to get things you know you don't have to go hunting around for all the stuff so um anyway mine are going to look probably just a little different than yours because mine all my pieces were like individual things like you know the organza was in a box and the rick rack was in a box and the buttons were on a card you know so they're all going to be a little different but that's the only thing that's going to be different and my um, glitter vinyl might look a little different than yours because it was some that i had on hand so okay so tonight we're going to talk a little bit about the book first you know we'll talk a little bit about the fabrics and the thread and then we're going to get into the embroidery okay so i'll put this up here second here I got to get turned around so are there any questions so far I think everybody if you don't have the design or the embellishment kit and you want it it go to shieldsewingcenter.com and they're both up there I think it's $24.95 a piece as I remember so it's like $50 for the whole thing with the embellishment kit so it's kind of nice to have the embellishment kit Okay, so let's talk a little bit about um, the preparation stuff. I think most of you have done some of these kind of projects before because we've done a couple of these now. So this is going to look familiar to you, but we better go over it. Okay. So the first thing you will need is your threads, of course. And what I did with my thread is I matched 
I had the um, uh, We Whisk Your Merry Christmas Fat Quarter Bundle, and I feel so bad that I couldn't get those for people. But um, if you were able to get a kit, that's probably what um, some of you were able to find kits online, and that's probably the fabrics that are in it. So the threads that I used, and I put these up on the group too, I used the Brother thread, and so I used two greens. Um, they, these are like my fabric needed more of a mossy green, so I have kind of a light moss green and a darker moss green. And these are the old Brother colors, um, moss green and fresh green. So I put these up on the group. So I used two greens. I used red. So just match your fabric. You know, if you have a darker red, put a darker red with it. I used brown. Uh, I matched my, you know, my felt or my fabric for my little gingerbread people and my little gingerbread houses. So I used, this is light brown. This is the brother light brown. And I used white and black. So white and black. And then I also used a silver. Okay, so those there was only seven colors, and for some of you, if you haven't tried the Brother Threads before, there's only seven colors, and if you got the kit, you know, like that has all the We Whisk You Merry Christmas um, fabrics, that would be a good way to try the Brother Threads because you don't need too many. You know, there's only seven um, in this little project, so that it worked out really well, and um, that's what I used was the Brother um, the Brother Threads. So let's talk a little bit about the fabrics then. A lot of you are picking your own fabrics, and I know when you open this book, it does look a little bit daunting. So just like we did for like um, for the the bench pillow and for We Whisk You Merry Christmas, I went through this list of fabrics and I just numbered them one, two, three, and so on, all the way down. And there's 18 fabrics. Okay, so um, I picked. So, so mine were actually the actual ones that were here because they were in that fat quarter bundle. But if you pick other ones, it's just fine. You know, find something that's close, okay? So I numbered them so that I could label, when I went to go cut my fabrics, I could label my bags. So I, I always like to cut my fabric. And my bags, a lot of them are empty because, you know, I, I've been working on this. So, you know, I, here's my number one bag and then that's the ones that I would put my pieces that I cut out of that so that I have it all numbered so I know exactly what I need to have for each block okay so that's how I did it and we've done this before so I think most of you understand how to do that and I think there was 18 fabrics and that was including the border so like my border is that white out of the we whisk oops can't find it here it is down here at the bottom um, that white with the little, um, it's sort of like the black border that a lot of us put on our quilt, but this is the white instead. So I used that. Um, and I had enough to do both both um, a pillow and this is going to be a wall hanging. So so hopefully that makes sense to everybody. But I did number it and then I numbered the bags so that when I went to cut my fabric, I had everything labeled so I knew exactly what I was using. Especially if you're not using the exact fabric, you know, that they used in the in the um, book. And then, of course, I had to go through this whole embellishments list and I had to find, you know, tan felt and the, and the glitter vinyl and the mylar sheets and all that stuff. So I, had, I went through and ordered all of these little separate things, but then a week later they had that wonderful embellishment kit. So most of you have the embellishment kit and it sure makes it a lot easier because then you don't have to go through and try to find all these little pieces, okay? And they're already cut for you, so you don't have to cut them all. So I had to cut all of mine too. <laughs> but except for the felt, I think the felt we, you might have had to cut in the in the um, in the embellishment kits. But but that was nice because um, I so I went through that. That's what this part is is all the embellishments. So a lot of the older quilts um, did not have embellishment kits. So um, this is how you had to go through, you know, had to go through your embellishment list and get all the stuff for that. Um, so anyway, that's what I did with mine, but you guys have a nice kit, so, okay? So there's your fabric, you know, and which ones, and like I said, I just numbered them. And then over here on the next page, this is page four. On the next page then, what I did is these are the, the um, cutting diagrams. And so what I did is I marked each one according to what I had it marked over here so that I knew exactly what I needed to do. 
So I have them all listed and I have them all marked one through, um, I think 18 was the, um, 18 was the border. And then one of the ones at the bottom here is the felt. This brown one is actually, you have to cut your piece of felt into these pieces. But, um, so I had these all numbered to match my list of fabrics over here, okay? And that worked out really well. And I just, I just cut each fabric as I went. You know, I went through and I cut each one and marked off the ones and then put them in the little baggie with the corresponding number, okay? So that works out really well. Um, the next page on the book is a little bit of basic um, line, you know, like hooping and applique instructions and like some trimming instructions. But we're gonna go over some of that um, tonight also, okay? Um, these are very similar to other think projects that we've done with Kimberbell, so I don't think you'll have any problems. And the, pl the blocks were very quick and very fun. Okay. Now, the one thing I did want to tell you, I'm going to go through a few of these blocks that I had made some specific notes on, and you might want to take a, you know, take a pencil and mark on your papers. Um, there was just a couple of them that had like some specific things that I don't want you to forget about. Like the first couple blocks are these applique blocks. They're, the, they're like the little signs that say official cookie tester and baking spirits bright. Those two I use, so for all of the blocks, the, the, like the background piece, okay? So for all of the blocks, the background piece, I put a piece of shape flex, that Pellon shape flex on the back of the fabric to give it body, okay? So I do that with all my background pieces. But this one was an unusual one in that I also put it on the applique piece because the applique piece was white and I had these two really strong dark colors underneath. So I did put a piece of the shape flex on the white pieces that became my appliques just so that the, the color wouldn't bleed through, okay? So that's an unusual thing. I did not, I don't normally do that but I put face, I always put the shape flex on the back of all my fabric. And so we'll, you'll see that when we get to the, the block we're gonna do tonight, okay? And the other thing about this that it says is do not trim the applique until you have done the lettering in the center. So when you get the tack down, you know, you put your applique down for these two signs and then it does these letters. Don't trim close to the stitches until the, towards the end when you're ready to do the satin stitching because that way it won't pull away from those stitches, okay? Because there's quite a lot of stitching inside there and it might pull away from your, your cutting and then show a raw edge. So that's one of the things I say in here, just be, can, be um, aware of that and pay attention to the instructions, okay? Because it does tell you that in these instructions, okay? So that's the first two. So this one is one that I did, I put the shape flex on the back of the, you know, the background pat fabric and actually the applique. The other ones I normally do not use on the appliques because I don't really think it's necessary. Um, the, the color block stuff is like a topping stuff. Yeah, you could use that too, Jan, but it's not something I have all the time. So honestly, I just use put shape flex on the back to give it another layer and then you don't see through it. Okay, so then the next two blocks were these little applique blocks that are the gingerbread people. Okay, so I did not put the shape flex on the back of the little brown pieces that were for the gingerbread people, but I did put the shape flex on the back of my background fabric, okay? I also, this one here, if you see, they always put, I don't know if you can see this on my paper, but they put the special hooping or trimming instructions they have a special hooping instruction also that there is a line for the fabric to be placed on for these two gingerbread people because you kind of put the fabric there's a little there's a little line that's going to stitch like this on the corner and then you put the fabric along that line so it brings it down to like the bottom left corner okay for both of these so that just be just be careful that you're reading the instructions and it does tell you that in these two, but there is a, there's also a placement line for those. Okay, and then the lollipop sticks, there's three of these, and there's just a little, like a little stick that's on here. I don't know if you can, if I get a little closer, you can see it. 
And then that's where we're going to put the yo-yos on the top and they make the, the lollipops. This one's a little different in that it does has a placement line for the fabric. So the first thing you do, you just hoop your stabilizer and then you do a placement line and then you, you're going to glue stick your fabric down on top of the placement line. And then it also sews down a trimming line. So this is one of those ones that we have to trim it on the line that it sews around. And that's the size that it needs to be because it's an odd size. And this one um, is not um, one of the rulers that we have. So this one, they give you a trimming line and you'll trim like right on top of the line. And again, it tells you that in the instructions. So just be watching your instructions, okay? So are there any questions about these blocks so far? These are the applique blocks. These first, what, six or one, two, three, four. You have to make three of the lollipop sticks. So there's, there's seven that are all just applique. Okay, so they're very easy. Second here, I'm gonna turn my iron on so when I need it, it won't be off. Okay. Then when you get down to the next section, these are the dimensional blocks. So these you're gonna be doing two appliques and there's a piece of felt underneath and that is raw edge applique. And then there'll be regular applique of a piece of fabric on top. So those are very easy. And, and again, there's no special like, um, there's no special hooping instructions or anything for those, okay? And when I show you the block that I'm gonna do tonight, this is basically the way I hoop all of the blocks with the exception of these little sticks up here because the fabric was so small I had to just glue stick it down to the hoop. Okay, so that one's just a little bit different, but the rest of them are about the same as the one we'll do tonight. Okay, so we got the little tree and that's a dimensional one. It has two appliques, so there's like a felt applique and then the tree. And then the stocking is the same way. It's gonna have that, the, um, it's gonna have the felt underneath and then the applique fabrics on the top. And there's no real, in, you know, um, real unusual hooping instructions for that one either. And then the other, another dimensional one is going to be these candy canes. Now this one's done with mylar, so we are going to do mylar in. We're going to do this gingerbread house tonight. That's what, what we're going to do because it has mylar and the um, and the glitter vinyl, and both of them in that same design. So I figured it would be easier if we just did one that combined several and just did one block. Um, Denise, no, I used a tear away. Denise asked what type of stabilizer I use and I used tear away. I used uh, just, a, just a standard tear away and then I glue stick it down to the fabric. I am not pre quilting these. If you want to pre-quilt these with the Kimberbell designs, and by the way, they have Christmas designs. You could pre-quilt each one of these little blocks, like you, some of you did that with um, the Halloween pillow. You can go get some of their, they have two or three now Christmas um, packages for the quilting, and you can do each, each block separately, okay? So, and then you would want to use the no-show mesh and batting. But I use tearaway because I'm going to quilt them in the machine instead because I want to quilt through the backing because this is going to be a wall hanging. This one's going to be a wall hanging, so I want to make sure I'm quilting through the backing. Okay. Then, so this one, the candy canes is mylar. So we'll be doing some mylar tonight too. Uh, the one we're going to do tonight is the gingerbread house A. So this one is in a five by seven hoop and the one thing that's different about this one, and we'll sh I'll show you this as we do it. Normally, when you use glitter vinyl, you know how we, we um, tack it down and then we trim it and then we iron it down with an iron? They told you not to for this because then it made it kind of um, puckery so that it looked like snow. So that one, so this one we're not gonna iron the glitter vinyl, which is an unusual thing. I normally iron it down. And so I can show you on my pillow here. Let me grab my pillow. And I can show you how it looks kind of puckery. It's kind of cool, actually. Let's see if I can show you on this bigger one here. I'll, I'll hold this up and see if you can see it. Can you see how it looks kind of puckery? So it looks like snow. 
along here. So that's why they didn't iron it down this time. It, so that it looked more like snow on the roof, okay? Okay, so the last three dimensional blocks are the three different little houses, the gingerbread houses. So the, the um, <clears throat> there's several different mediums we're going to use. We're going to use the um, we're going to use the uh, felt and the um, glitter vinyl and mylar on those. And there's three of them. There's three different ones. Like the first one is in a five by seven hoop. That's the one we're going to do tonight. And then the second one is in a four by four hoop. So it's a smaller one. And this one doesn't have any glitter vinyl. It just had the mylar. And then um, the third one is that bigger one that I just showed you. And it's in a five by seven hoop. And it has the, um, there's no mylar on this one, but there's glitter vinyl, okay? So that are, those are all the blocks with the exception then of the pieced blocks. So the last blocks are these traditional pieced blocks, those little, um, those little um, pinwheels. And I went over piecing a pinwheel block um, with the, um, we whisk you a Merry Christmas quilt. So if you need to remember how to do this, if you can't, if you can't figure it out from the instructions and want to watch a video, just go back to, um, I think it was the, the second or third video that it, it was when we kind of put things together for the We Whisk Your Merry Christmas um, quilt and we did these on the corners. So I did a block um, from start to finish um, on the on the video. So that would be that would help you if you need a little help. But the instructions are quite good. You're going to make two of these larger blocks and then you're going to make three that are small. And I think mine are already sewn into the quilt. <laughs> I don't have one of the small ones right now. But these were like these that turn out to be like two and a half inch blocks and I think these were four and a half inch blocks. The, the, the three are really small. These three little red ones are pretty small. Okay. So those are the three the three um, different types of blocks. You know, we have applique blocks, dimensional blocks, and then these traditional blocks in the quilt. Then there's also a few, when you go to put it together, there's like some filler blocks too. And so we'll talk about next week, we'll talk about the assembly, and we'll do some quilting next week, okay? So are there any questions so far about the blocks? There's only 13 um, embroidered blocks, and then there's these five um, piece blocks in it. So it really doesn't take very long to do. And the, most of the blocks only take like maybe 15 minutes. So, okay. All right. So let's go ahead and we're going to hoop a block. So I'm going to, I'm pretty much did all of my hooping the same way. Let me get this box out of my way so it won't hit anything. We're going to go back and the one we're going to do tonight is this gingerbread house A. Okay. So that's the one we're going to do tonight. And it is done in a five by seven hoop. So I'm going to get my five by seven hoop out here. And whoops, I just heard my phone. So make sure somebody didn't need to get held me. You know? Okay. And what I have done is I prepared my fabric. So this is my piece of, of my gray background fabric. And whoops, mine's kind of wrinkly. So I'm just going to touch this with the iron here. Something next to me. And the, the gray, my gray was the only one that I wasn't able to, um, I didn't have the gray that they called for in the kit, so I had another gray, and it looks just fine with it. And this piece was, I believe, eight and a half by eight and a half. So this block is going to end up six by six when we're done. And I'm going to take a piece of my, my pre-cut tearaway stabilizer. You know me, you know, I don't like to, I don't like to, cut stabilizer. So this is a 9 by 12 piece of pre-cut stabilizer that I'm going to put in my 5 by 7 hoop. So what I do is I have my shape flex cut and adhered to the back of the, the background fabric. I do not have any shape flex on any of my other applique pieces. So like there's a piece of felt for this one and there's a this is a, the door. Okay. And then I'm going to turn this over and I know this probably sounds silly, but this seems to work for me for most of these. I've been doing most of these this way. I don't like spray, so I use my fabric glue stick, and I'm just going to take my glue stick, and I'm going to put some glue stick on the back of this fabric. Okay, across there. I'm going to flip it over, and I'm going to, whoops, hopefully it won't fall on the floor. 
flip it over and we're going to put it in. I'm just going to kind of center it on my stabilizer so it's about as centered as I can get it. And I'm going to, I think I need to go over this way just a little bit. Just didn't get it quite over far enough. There we go. It's harder on the machine, but I wanted you to be able to see what I was doing. And then I'm going to smooth it down to the stabilizer. Okay. And then I'm going to take my 5x7 hoop. And remember, there is an up and down to these hoops. Remember that little, the little arrow is a top and it's going to point to the top of your hoop and I'm going to just center this as best I can in the hoop and remember we're going to trim it off so if it's not perfect it's okay but I tried to get it as centered as I can just hold it and I'm going to take this over to my hoop and drop it in and that's basically the way that I hoop all of these the one that was done differently was those little sticks because they had an actual placement line and I just glued the fabric on top and it was not in the hoop. But these I usually um, try to put a little bit of the fabric in the hoop seems to work the best. And for some reason I like to use, um, it's easier for me to hoop these that, that the fabric doesn't really fit in the hoop, um, not in the magnetic hoops. It's easier for me to hoop these in standard hoops. So generally, when I'm doing the Kimberbell blocks like this, I use my standard hoops. Okay, so I got that all adhered to my stabilizer. I have my shape flex on the back. And oh, by the way, I don't think it's on the website yet, but I got finally got some shape flex. It's been on back order since July. So I, I finally have shape flex in the store and I'm going to put it up on the website. It's just, I've just got packages. They're smaller packages. But um, but they are, at least we have some in the store, so if you don't have any, you can order it, and I'll put it up on the website on um, Tuesday. So, okay? So I'm ready to do my embroidery. I'm going to go ahead and put this in the machine. And I've chosen my design already. And this is that, that um, house, that, yeah, gingerbread house A. Okay, so it's ready to go. So the first thing I'm going to do is the outline. And what I do, and I, oh, I forgot to show you this. So at the end, you know, these are all the specific instructions towards the front of the book for each block. But they tell you then to go back to the actual color change charts, which are towards the back here. So then here's all the color change charts for all of the designs towards the back. And so we're going to go to house A, which is right here. And then I usually just go here. And I, I use this when I'm actually embroidering because it tells me everything to do right in the instructions. And it also gives me the colors right here. So you can kind of see, you know, the little square of what color I'm going to be using. Okay. So this is how I do. And then also it note, noted up here that we're not going to press those glitter sheets down because we want them to look puffy. Okay. So that was one of the notes. So this is what I do. So I kind of go through and read my instructions you know, in the front where that block is. So here's my gingerbread A right here, and it was on page eight. So I kind of get, you know, then I know how, what fabrics I need and all that. And then I go back to the back where the actual color change chart is, and I use this for the actual embroidery, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is it's going to be the cookie placement line. So in other words, the cookie part is gonna be the felt. So I'm gonna put my brown thread in. And we will use that. Whoops, I can't. I, I ran out of brown thread, so I had to go get another spool of brown thread. This is the light, the brother light brown. All right, so this is going to be my placement line for this piece of felt. So is everybody following along so far? Do you have any questions? Had a few people come in as we've gotten started. Now the felt's going to be a um, the felt is going to be a raw edge applique. There's not going to be any satin stitching over the felt, but there will be satin stitching over the other pieces or decorative stitching. I think some of it has satin and some has decorative stitching. Okay. 
And then our little chart says to place the felt. I've got this little thread sticking up, so we'll trim that. I'm going to place my felt over the top. Whoops, i got a bunch of thread on it. Over the placement line, okay? Get that on there. And then the next step is going to be the tack down line for the felt. And I'm going to leave my brown in because I want that little bit of brown to show on the edge of my cookie. So it's going to tack it down. I'm trying to remember all the colors I use, so I'll have to look at my, my doors and stuff. <laughs> They don't have to be exactly the same as my other one, but I was trying to make them. So anyway, I'm going to make this into a wall hanging. So instead of the pillow, but I'll show you how to do the pillow back. We'll do the pillow back like we did the um, the Halloween pillow. I like that three-piece back. It's very nice, and it's so much easier to get that great big pillow into. I just thought these houses were adorable. They were so much fun. And most of the little houses have the buttons are like on the little houses. So I actually, so when we go to put this together, I'll show you how I, I sewed the buttons on with the sewing machine. Made it a lot faster because there's a whole bunch of buttons on it. So Okay, so then it tells me in the, my instructions to trim the felt. So we're going to trim our felt. I am going to leave it about, maybe about an eighth of an inch or so away from the stitching, so this is raw edge applique. So I'm not gonna trim right up to it, I'm gonna leave just a little little bit of a line showing. And when you when it's raw edge, you know, you kinda of wanna take your time and make it smooth so that it looks beautiful along the edges. Some of this actually will be covered, but the edges right here will not, like the sides will not be covered, but some of this will be covered by some of the applique pieces. So we're gonna trim around here, I'm leaving just a little bit along the outside edge. I have a hard time trimming felt. Get this down. Okay, see if I got it fairly smooth. That doesn't look too bad. Get this little piece up here. Um, and by the way, um, Kimberbell has this beautiful new felt that I can get now, the felt like in rolls. And they have, I have that all up on the website too, and they have this adorable new um, design called um, Heart Felt Friends. And it's like Christmas ornaments made out of felt that you can also make like garlands with their new wool Christmas balls. And this felt is really nice quality felt. You know, finding nice felt is really hard and it is very nice quality felt. And they have rather large pieces of it. So anyway, that's up on the website already, and I have some coming in. I'm a little low on it after the event last weekend, so but there's some coming in, and it'll be here Tuesday or Wednesday. Okay, so there's my house all trimmed, and this is a little chimney. And really, that's all that's going to show is going to be just these little edges right here. All right, so then the next step, it says, is going to be my door placement. And the door, I'm actually going to use white thread as the um, satin stitch. So I'm going to go ahead and put my white thread in for the tack or the placement in the tack down line. I'm really liking this new brother thread. And there's there's 314 colors now. So all right, so we're going to sew the placement line and get ready for our door. I've got my little piece of door. It's this little green piece. Do a little applique here. But this project was so fun. I have just really enjoyed working with this. All right, so then I'm going to pull this out. We're going to lay our door. I'm going to place it says to place the fabric. We're going to lay that down and we're going to stitch down the the fabric, we're going to do our tacking stitch, and then we're going to trim the fabric. So we're, a lot of you got the, the um, kits for this, didn't you? I think a lot of you said you did, were able to find it, or find the, um, the fat quarter bundles so you could do this. 
All right, so let's trim this. We're going to trim this close to the stitches now because this is going to be covered up with satin stitches. Just be a little careful of your, not to snag your um, felt on the underneath. I have a little trouble cutting against felt, so I just have to take my time here. So don't snag it. Hopefully you can see me trimming okay. So we're going to trim this. All right, let's get some of these little hairs out of there. This is my last block. I'm so excited. I did all the other ones yesterday, and I trimmed them all this morning. Okay, so now we got that. So then what's the next step? The next step says this is for the snow. So this, there's going to be snow down here, okay? And we're going to do this kind of weird because I've got scraps to use. So I'm going to I'm going to show you how I did this with my scraps. So I've got pieces big enough, but I'm not big enough to go across the whole thing. Now you got in your kits a piece big enough to go over this whole hoop, but I've been using up my scraps. So I'm going to show you how I'll do it. All right. So we're going to leave the white thread in and we're going to do the placement line for the snow at the bottom here. because I had a bunch of little pieces that were in my scrap box and I thought, well, I want to use these up. So I'm, I have enough here, but I have to do it in two hitches. So I'll show you what I did. Did this with the first one too. So, so I got some more hairs sticking down here. There we go. And it's going to do the roof. But the pieces that you received in your um, kits will be big enough to cover the whole thing at once. I just don't, I just didn't have that. So. With the, they always give you ample stuff in the kits and stuff, so I often have scraps. That's enough to do, you know, more. And then there's a little piece up here on this chimney. So hopefully I have enough. Otherwise, you'll be sitting, seeing me cut, fa cut the fabric. Okay. So let's see where it's going to start. So this is how I did this. Okay. So it's going to start up here around the roof. So I've got this piece here that's big enough to do that. But it also wants to go down and do this bottom piece. So what I'm going to do, yeah, you know, this is pretty. This this I got at, this was um, Cricut. This was Cricut. I, I ran out of white, and I had to go over to like Joanne's one day, and I got this, and this was the Cricut vinyl, but I just have pieces left. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover up this top portion and I'm going to kind of hold it in place until there's some stitches in it. But then, see, it's not big enough for the bottom. So what we'll do is we'll watch it stitch here, and then we'll stop the machine. Hopefully it doesn't go down and do the bottom first. I don't think it did. Nope, it does the roof. Okay, so we're going to do the roof. I didn't remember it doing that because I know I did this last time. So we'll let it sew out the roof section. I can't remember what the white looks like in the kits. I didn't look at it that close. Okay, so we got to get ready. We got to got to watch this because it's going to go down and do this after it gets done with this. So we'll stop the machine so we can put another piece down there. Okay, it's going to cut and move down there and I'll just stop the machine now. It'll do its little, you know, finishing. I'm going to lift the foot and then I'm going to find another piece here that I can put over this little section over down here, okay? Because I had a, I had enough on this piece to do that. So we'll just kind of hold it in place until it gets started. So that's one way you can use up your scraps. They always give you plenty. And you know, this glitter vinyl is not really cheap and I like to conserve it. <laughs> So I often do this. I keep all these little pieces because I can use it later. Okay. So now that's all of the tacking. So now we need to trim. So it says to trim the applique glitter sheet. So we are going to trim this close to the stitches on both pieces here because there's going to be kind of a decorative stitch around this. Sometimes when they do the glitter, they do it raw edge, but this one's going to have decorative stitching, like a motif stitch around it. So I do want it to be relatively close. 
And on you, you know, this time we're not going to we're not going to iron this because normally, you know, we put a pressing cloth over it after, right after we trim, and then we iron it down. And we're not going to do that this time. So get this, getting it pretty close. And I'm going to keep these pieces because these pieces are big enough for other things. So we'll just keep them. I just put, I've got a little scrap bucket in my other in the other room with all my extra vinyls. So I think I have every color. But the other night I was working on the class, you know, for December because I wanted to do some of those cute little towels that um, that are in the back of the We Whisk You a Merry Christmas book. And I had every color of vinyl except for brown. I couldn't, I didn't have any brown, so I had to, I, I ran around the house and I thought, gosh, I've got to have some brown. So I looked and I had another kit for another quilt and there was just a little bitty piece of brown in it, just enough to do those two, two um, towels. So I will, I ordered some and then I will put it, replace it. <laughs> so I found some brown. I had to do some hunting though, I didn't think I had any. There's little gingerbread people on the towels so boy, I didn't do a very good job trimming that one did I? Let's see if I can get it a little closer. I have trouble um, trimming over felt and there's always there's been felt in a lot of these so okay we're getting it trimmed. I'm trimming pretty close so that when the decorative stitches it'll cover everything. Let's see where the hell did I do here? Oh I gotta get the little chimney up here. Yeah. This is the top of the chimney. Oops. Get that done. Remember I had trouble doing this one before, but I thought this would be a good one to use for the demonstration because it had a little bit of everything in it. You know, it had the glitter and it had the mylar. The mylar is really fun. I love the mylar. They do a lot of mylar. Okay, whoops, I got to get this little bottom part done here miss this part. There we go. Okay, so there's our roof. We got it all trimmed. And this is step number seven in the machine. So it says this is the decorative outline. So it's going to do the top part first up here. And remember, we didn't press this. So it's going to look kind of wrinkly when it's done because of those stitches going in it. But they wanted that because then it looked more like snow. So it's going to do, it's doing like a little, um, kind of like a little, what do they call that? It's like the little, the little uh, stars around it. So yeah, so I did find the brown, the brown uh, glitter. I had a piece about this long, <laughs> is all, that I had, and I was able to do the um, towels, but I haven't got them quite done yet, so I'm not going to show them to you yet. I'll show them to you next week. I haven't got them quite done yet. But that'll be the first weekend, in, the first Sunday in December. We will do the, uh, the two little towels in the back of the We Whisk You Merry Christmas book. They had several really cute um, projects. There's a, the two towels, there's, a, there's a, an apron, and a placemat. So I'll try to get all, all the projects done, but we're just going to, in the class, we'll do the, the, one of the uh, towels. And then the um, Kimberbell Club class um, for December is also going to be Gingerbread Man because there's a, it's a candle mat. So it's so cute. It has these little gingerbread people all around it, and it's a candle mat. Oh, candle wick. Thank you, Gail. Can't think of what it is. Yes, candle wick. I can never think of that word. I don't know why. Because they do a lot of it, and it's sort of like a little, it looks like a little star almost. But it is going to do, and I'll get the camera a little closer when it gets done sewing, so you can see um, that it's going to start to make it look a little bit on the um, crinkly side because of all the stitches in it. But that one, that's what they wanted with the snow. It wanted to look three dimension. So I think we're getting ready to do, let's see. Oh, yeah, we're going to be doing my line. doesn't do the snow yet at the bottom, it just did the top. 
and the little chimney yet. Okay, so does anybody have questions? Is this making sense to everybody? These blocks are so much fun. This is a good a good project to watch some TV and, and relax and just do some embroidery. Not too much, I mean there's applique, but mostly what you have to do is trim, but it makes it really fun and easy. And the, the pillow, um, like I said, I think this one I'm going to make into a wall hanging. So I can just do it exactly like the pillow. I'm just going to put pretty fabric on the back instead of muslin. So. Okay. Okay. So the next step is going to be number eight, and that is the door decorative stitch. So it's just going to be this door. But let me see if you can kind of see. It makes it, whoops. Something didn't cut here, so you trim. Now oh, it's kind of thick. There we go. I will rethread the machine here. But you can see it makes it a little bit on the puffy side here. Okay, so it makes it kind of puffy. So we'll, there'll be there'll be decorative stitches down here too, but they do that after the mylar. But I, we, you know, we're going to be doing mylar in a minute. But it has to do a little bit more decorative stitching first. So the first, it's going to do the door. And I think the door had some a, a cute little curly cue around the outside edge of it. Looking to see door decorative, yeah. And then the roof line frosting. Oh, it is going to do a little bit on the roof too. Yeah, because it has the little. You can see the little curly cues and you can see it along the, along the door. I'm going to stop it just a second clip this clip so it doesn't get stuck in something. There we go. There was a little tail sticking up. And then it's going to do a little satin stitch along the door. And then this one had, um, as I remember, this one has a button or two buttons on it. Let me look at it. Two buttons. It has a little doorknob, so you use some of those little buttons in your kit. Um, for the doorknobs, and then it also has a, a button at the top of the roof. Um, I think it's the bell that goes on this one. So it was really fun putting the buttons on. So I'm just going to do the satin stitch. So this one took about um, 15 minutes to sew out. So I'm sorry it takes a little bit longer, but I wanted to show you all the little techniques with the uh, mylar and everything. Let's see, this one has, oh, this one has the cute little curly cues around the door, too. We're going to do a couple, one more little decorative stitch, and then we'll do the mylar. Mylar's really fun. I love doing mylar. And this one uses um, silver mylar, so that will be in your kit. And you can see I've got pieces here. While this is sewing, I'll show you. I've got these pieces. See, I've used some of it. So keep your pieces because you can use these over, you know, for little things. So I, I try to conserve as much as I can and then I keep all the little pieces and use them. Because mylar, you know, I go through a lot of mylar. And I think, and I did this one in white. The next one I did in white too. It's another little piece of the roof that it's going to do. Like a little decorative stitch that goes along the top of the roof. And I did this one in white as well. So like most of the time, you know, when you see gingerbread houses, they're kind of done with a lot of white icing and stuff. So, so I did this, most of the decorative stuff in white. It's just going to go along the edge of the roof. Oh, and the other thing I wanted to tell you is <laughs> the one thing I forgot to order this week was when we go to do those um, yo-yos, when we go to finish the yo-yos and do the popsicles, they have these great things. I, you know, I know people have used these, but I just have never owned any. This is a yo-yo maker, and I've always had trouble with the sewing for the yo-yos. So um, I, I'm gonna these. I'm gonna put these up on the website, and if you want them, you can text me, and I'll hold them for you. But the yo, they make these yo-yo makers, and it's the size large that we're gonna use to make those um, little, um, the little lollipops 
So if you want one of these, you know, you can text me and I'll hold one for you. I'm going to order them. Of course, I forgot to order them this week, but they'll be here plenty of time. I'll promise I'll order them this week. So the yo-yo maker really helped me because I'm not very good at keeping my stitches even when I'm going around yo-yos. I've done them by hand, but I don't do very well with them. So, okay. So the next step is going to be the, the um, placement lines for the candy cane that, that we're going to use the mylar for. So hopefully I have enough. I think I do. I've been using up all these little pieces of mylar I've had. Oh, this one's going to be covered up on the edge too. Some of the little houses were, were raw on the edges, but this one's actually going to be covered up with the candy canes. I'd forgotten that this one was covered up a little bit. So it's going to do our two placement lines. And I just left the white thread in because the first color is white in the candy cane, and then we're going to switch over to some red. But we're going to use the silver mylar. Now mylar, I have a hard time with mylar. It scooches around a lot, so I usually tape this down. So I'm going to go in, so you can see there's there's a, a decorative stitch. It's not very easy to see. It's in white, but it's right here and right here. So I'm going to make sure that I can cover both of those pieces. And I am going to tape this down because mylar likes to scoot on me and it's slippery so we'll tape it down so it doesn't move i think this side will be okay but I'll, I'll hold it over here while it's stitching okay so then the first part of the we're going to just tape this down to the hoop and then the first step of the the um, mylar is going to be the white lines in it and it's going to go around and do some decorative stitching On both sides and then when you're done when then we'll do the red and then it, we're just going to pull it off and there'll be some satin stitching around the edges I just love the way they did the mylar They're, each one of the houses has some mylar on it and actually maybe the last one didn't but the, the first two did and they did little candy canes like for decorative um, edges on the houses. Oh, thanks, Melody. Yeah, you know, I always made yo-yos the old-fashioned way that you cut the circles, you know, and then you had to turn it over and you had to stitch it by hand. Well, you still have to stitch these by hand, but man, did those little yo-yo makers work great. Because then there's like a, you just use a square of fabric. You just use a square of fabric, and there's two pieces here. There's like a little, a little tub, and then a, then a flat piece, and you just put the square of fabric in there, and then push this down in it, and then you just go in and out the little holes, and then make sure your, your your stitch is nice and even. Oh my gosh, I, I, that was the fastest yo-yos I've ever made. It's been years since I've made a yo-yo. And they have these in like all different sizes. They have little itty bitty ones. You can make teeny tiny little, you know, yo-yos and big ones. And so this is the large size. I think. Yeah, this was the size large. But I'll have these up on the website. I'll, I promise I'll put them up there Tuesday, or you can email me or text me, and I'll hold one for you. Because they're like six ninety nine, I think six ninety nine, I think is what they are. Okay, so there's our white on our mylar. We're going to leave the mylar on here and now I'm going to switch to the red for the other part of the candy cane. Oops, stuck in here. I think my iron's going to turn off again so I'll have to shake it. All right, put the red in here. And then it's going to do the other stripe. Yeah, when I saw that there was yo-yos, I, I, I panicked because I didn't, I never had very good luck with yo-yos. But in the instructions, I think it's on page, let's see if I can find it in the instructions here. The instructions on, I know I found it in here, page 13, that talks about the fabric yo-yos and they give you a template. So if you want to do it the old-fashioned way, there's a round template in here, right here, okay? Um, where does the mylar show, Jan? It shows through the, the white and the silver, the white and the red both. You'll see the silver through both. Because the decorative fill 
that is in here is very sparse. So you can see the silver mylar through um, both colors. But um, on page 13, it told you that the large yo-yo maker by Clover makes the same size yo-yo with no raw edges in the yo-yo. So that was nice. And then the piece of fabric that they have you cut is the right size for the yo-yo maker. So all you have to do is stick it in there and then go up and down and it works really great. So I kind of panicked a little bit when I had to make yo-yos. So it was very easy. So yeah, so let me see if I can get a little closer. You can see that you'll be able to see the silver through both of these because this is like a decorative uh, kind of a motif stick instead of being solid. So I can see the silver through both of those red and the white. And then after we get done with this part, I'm going to see if I can find it. I can never find my tweezers. So if you have some tweezers, it works really well for the mylar, but you know, Jan can never find her tweezers. I know I've got some, but I cannot ever find them. So at this point, and you want to do this a little carefully, since we've done all this, the stitching, in the instructions here it says to tear away the mylar. So what I'm going to do is untape this now. Oops, let me just get this down a little bit. Got to get a hold of the tape though. I'm, I'm going to be careful so that I don't waste, you know, there's there's pieces of mylar I can use here, so I don't want to waste any of this. Okay. And then I'm going to carefully tear this away. And where it's stitched, stitched through, it's going to make it pretty easy to tear. It's just going to tear right off. And I'm going to be careful that I don't waste a bunch of it. Let's see how I do here. And it really helps if you have a pair of tweezers, because if there's little pokies that are sticking out, it actually works better if you have some tweezers, but I, of course I cannot find my tweezers again. I should get busy and get them found, but I still haven't done it. Okay, so I'll just use my fingers to pull off these little bits. Okay, so there's that. We've got these little bits that we want. You don't want all this extra stuff sticking out here. You want to get rid of those. And I usually just take, kind of take my fingernail and go along the edge, and it usually comes off pretty easily. And this one, sometimes I have a little trouble getting it started, but there we go. And get all these little bits out of here. There's going to be a satin stitch over the top, so that'll be good. There's a little piece here. But yeah, the, the, um, if you have trouble with your hands especially, if you have your little tweezers, it really helps. But I usually can get it off with my fingers. All right, just tear it off. Oops, I'm getting close. A little piece right here yet, okay. A little piece right there. And then get this little piece out of here. So after class, I'll dig around the drawer and I know my tweezers are in there somewhere. Okay, a little piece over here yet. And I'm gonna leave the red in the machine and we're going to do the satin outline. This, the next step is the satin outline and it's going to be in red. Second here. Blow some of those little pieces off. I think I've still got one little piece sticking out here. This one's being cantankerous here. There we go. All right. So we got that torn off. So all I did was just tear off the mylar. Yes, I, I was take, yeah, tearing it towards the stitched item. And if you push it that way too, it'll go into the satin stitches. Thanks, Lynn. Yep, and then I'm going to do the next step is number 13, and that is going to be the satin stitch outline, and that's I'm going to do that one in red. So we'll leave the red in there. So we're getting very close. Whoops second here it sounds like I might have gotten caught up here so I'm gonna re-thread the machine you check my bobbin did you hear that funny noise I think it caught on the edge of the, the thread the thread spool so I'm just gonna check my bobbin make sure my bobbin's okay anytime you hear a funny noise or something's not sewing quite right make sure you change both the bobbin and the top you know re-thread the bottom and the top because it's never what you think it is it's always the exact opposite. 
So I think it just caught on my thread spool. The spool of thread's getting kind of empty, and I, there's a little there, there's a little sharp spot on the spool I see on the top. So I'm gonna just back it up. I do the back up here. I'm gonna go down here to the negative positive spool, and I'm just gonna back it up to the beginning because it just had started. Whoops. So that we can start again, and hopefully it'll cooperate this time. It sure was mad, wasn't it? I'll watch it this time, make sure it didn't catch. I don't think it did. Yeah, there's a little sharp spot on the one one edge of the spool, the top of it. So there we go. It's happier now. See, it's good that things like that happen when I'm filming because then you can see that I have problems too. In fact, my machine got to go visit Ron this week. I was a little bit surprised. I don't know what was going on with it, but it's happier now. All of a sudden, it, there was no upper tension. I don't know why. So I took, I sent it down to Ron, and he said, I asked him what was wrong, and he said, I don't know. He said, I just cleaned it out, and it's working fine. I'm like, okay, that's all I care about. And it's working fine. Got our, oh, those are going to be really cute. This was my favorite house. So I like the little candy canes on either side. It was sort of like, they were like little, uh, almost like little soldiers on the side of the house, you know. Getting close. Okay, so then the next part is, oh, we're going to do some more decorative, decorative stitching. both sides. So does anybody have questions? Is this get, is this all making sense to everybody? Are you all excited about starting the, starting your, your pillows? Do some of you have them done already? How many people have already made it? And like I said, I am going to make this one into a wall hanging. pick some backing fabric. I haven't decided what I'm going to use for backing yet. Maybe the red and white polka dots. This is turning out good. So I had, let's see, there's something else I was going to ask you about, tell you about. Oh, and we're going to get to use riprack. I love riprack. So here's the riprack. We'll have some big riprack and then some little teeny tiny riprack. I had to buy mine in a little package, but you got a bunch of riprack. I just love riprack. And then that organza is awesome. So I had to buy this package. This is my package. So I have this package that had all these colors of, of the organza, the um, glitter dot organza. So here's the red, and then here they have purple and silver. So I had to buy the package of this, but I had to buy two because I needed enough to do two of these pillows, so I have two of these packages now. And then like a week later, you know, um, a week later the uh, embellishment kit came out, so now you've got, you've got all your, all you need, so. Okay, so then the next piece is going to be the decorative stitching down along the snow down here at the bottom. So I'm going to put my white back in. If I can get this one rolled up so I don't get it caught in something. I've been using these same colors of thread a lot, and so I've been moving them from one box to another as I'm working on the projects because it's the same. Oh, Kathy says she has her fabric cut out. Yep. So I'm working on something for January. I think I know what I'm going to do. So that's the next thing on the docket is what we're going to do in January. So it's going to do that same little decorative stitch, and we decided it was candle licking. Thank you for telling me the word. Along the snow here. Oh, that'll be cute. That'll be cute, Melody. Make a table runner. Yeah, table runner would be cute, too. Yeah, it's kind of long, you know, they're like 36 or 38 by 16, so it's kind of long and skinny, but you could use, easily use it for a table runner or a 
um, wall hanging. So, because I'd already made a pillow, so I thought, well, this time I'll do a wall hanging because people asked me if I could make a wall hanging. Oh, cool. That's great, Colleen. You have all your blocks done? Awesome. Yeah, I really enjoyed, I've been really enjoying doing this because, like, I came home yesterday from work because I get off early, so I came home and this is what I did yesterday, is worked on the blocks and got them all done. And I uh, had some dinner with friends on Zoom. So we have, often we often do that. Okay, so there's, whoops, got a couple little tails here. We'll get those too. And then the last piece is going to be the cute little swirls on the top of the house here. It looks like I've got another tail. We'll get that off when we go to trim it. But I wanted to go through the trimming with you too. So one more little swirl decorative stitch. And these are really big, like they're like candle wicking, the little candle wicking stars too. That's cute. So we'll go through the trimming too. Uh, most of the trimming is the way we're going to trim these this evening um, with the um, with the rulers. So if you don't have the orange pop rulers, um, I would highly recommend these because they are so handy and then they're like just the right sizes for everything. You know. So. Um, there's two sets. There's a rectangle set and a square set. These are all on the website, too, if you don't already have them. I know a lot of you probably have them now. But um, I sh it sure has made it easier to do these blocks because I don't have to, you know, think to trim them. All I have to do is just trim. Make sure you get the right sizes all. Yeah, I'd forgotten how they, what they did for these little decorative things. These are cute. It's been a while since I did my first pillow. We'll do a little trimming. Oh, and the other thing, some of you, um, when I did the other video about the, um, remember when we did um, we just came there Christmas and I did the corner blocks that had the, um, that had those pinwheels in it. We used those really cool block block rulers. Well, the, the, the bigger ones are the same block block ruler we used before, the two and a half inch one. But those little teeny ones, you got to use this little one and a half inch one. So these are all up on the website too, these the sets of block block rulers to, to do those half square triangles. I mean, if you want to trim half square triangles, and I, I did them in the class before, so you can go watch that video. But oh my gosh, this saved my life because I love to do triangles. And I had a terrible time getting them squared up. And these are awesome. So I finally have a way that I can square triangles and all my pinwheels and everything turn out, you know, so well, so much better now because they're all perfectly. So this is the little block block ruler. This is the one and a half inch one. <laughs> that little one you square to one and a half and the bigger one to two and a half. So, and there's two sets. There's like an odd numbered set and an even numbered set up on the website. So I hadn't used that little teeny one for a long time. I'm not, I don't do little teeny tiny little squares very often, but I got to use the one and a half inch one <laughs> for this one, the little, the little red pinwheels. But that's in the We Wish You a Merry Christmas. Do you sell the scissors you are using? Yes, I do. These are on the website. These scissors, these are my double curved, Ginger double curved embroidery scissors. Yes, they're, they're on the website. I believe I put them under miscellaneous miscellaneous accessories so they are up there yes these are wonderful scissors I um I I had a lot of really good double curved scissors but my favorite ones are still these fingers because they have a really really sharp tip they're very pointy so you can get into all the little you know all the little areas so got a couple little more of those little candle wicking little circle things and then we're done I'll show you how to do the trimming. This, this one turned out really cute. I like the fun. The other part that was fun was um, was um, putting the buttons on because I don't always sew buttons on with the sewing machine, but it is really fun, especially when you have to do so many of them because there was like I don't know ten buttons to do. So I thought, well, that'd be fun to do it on, with, do them with the sewing machine. So well, I'll show you how I did them. 
We probably won't show all of them on that night, but I'll, when we get ready to do the assembly, I'll show you those. Okay, I think we're just about done here. The last stitch. Awesome. Okay, so there's our little house. Yeah, they, they are good scissors, Gail. I just, they just really, they're so sharp on the tip. Because I have some from by Fomore that I also like really well, but they don't have these really small tips on them, so you can get down into the little crevices better. These are the gingers, so those are up on the website. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take this out of the hoop, and if you give me a second, I'm going to move my camera over here so you can see me trim it. I'm going to move it over so you can see me trim better. I've got my other table over here. Makes it easier for you to see. We'll do a little trimming. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out of the hoop, and then I like to iron the edges. So I don't iron the whole thing. And remember, when you've got this glitter on here, you don't want to touch that with the iron because it'll melt it. But I do like my edges to stay smooth, and I'm also going to trim my blocks with my tearaway on the back. I don't like to take the tearaway off until after I trim. Because that way it gives, it keeps everything flatter and it gives it a little bit of body so that when you go to trim it, it stays smooth and even on the edges, okay? So I just like to smooth that out a little bit on the edges. You notice I'm not, I'm not going over the design. I'm just going around the edges just to make it smooth. Get those hoop marks out of there, okay? Like that, okay? And then in the book, so let's go ahead and go over here to this to my rotating mat. Now this is something else. If you don't have one of these, this is the most awesome thing ever. This is a Martelli roundabout. Those are up on the website too. And I use this all the time because this is the, about the only rotating mat that I've ever found that actually rotates smoothly and easily like this. So when, especially when you're using these pop rulers, so this one, we're going to go back to our other instruction. I believe it says that we need to trim this to six and a half. So it tells you down here at the, this is on the top of page nine, that this square is six and a half by six and a half. So that's what we're going to square it up to. And I have my six and a half by six and a half inch ruler out. Um, sometimes I actually add the, the next bigger size, but this, this one is big enough that I can hang on to it, okay? So I don't always do that. But let me, let me put the camera so you can see what I'm doing here. I'll stand up. It's easier for me to stand up. So the trick with these rulers is, you know, I kind of put them in the middle of the mat. And then you want to visually center your block. And what they do when they have you cut the fabric, they have you cut it 8.5 by 8.5. So this ruler all the way from edge to edge is 8.5 by 8.5. So it makes it easier to kind of get it lined up. And if you've got it fairly centered to begin with, it's easy to get these centered in your ruler. And that looks pretty good. And again, I left my tearaway on here. So when I get ready to do these, I'm going to turn this. Now, I'm left-handed. I know that that might be a little harder for other people. Um, if you're doing right-handed, you have to go this direction, okay? But I'm going to turn this towards me, and I'm going to cut this side and with these rulers, you're going to open your blade up, and then you're going to be cutting on the inside of the ruler, okay? So I'm going to put my fingers down. I'm going to spread my fingers apart so I can hold it tight, and I'm going to, I'm going to cut along this side. It took me a few times, and I do this quite deliberately because I'm not used to sew, you know, cutting on the inside of a ruler. So it took me a little getting used to, but I'm actually getting much better at it now. And I just take my time. When I go around, so I'm going to turn it around. So I'm turning and I'm going to hold the edge and I'm going to cut along this edge. And then you know you're going to have a nice square block the size we need it. And they have, give you these little, you know, these little extensions on the corners so that um, you can cut into the corners and get the whole thing done. And, and you want to have a nice... Um, Sharp blade, by the way, because I had to put a new blade in today. Because sewing or cutting with these, I really have to have a nice sharp blade. 
Okay, so there's our six and a half, and the other, they also come with these little rubber, little um, gripper things that you can put in the corners, and those work great. It really keeps it from sliding, because I don't have too much trouble with it moving on me. Okay. Oh, that is fine, Jan. What I do when you when you use these, what what you have to do is practice on some on some fabric, because what I did is I practiced, and then you want to lay your 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 rotary cutter down, and then slowly move up and make sure you have it pushed against the side of the ruler. It 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 is a little bit of a trick, and it took me a, a few times to try it. So just just do it slowly and deliberately, and don't get in a hurry. Okay, because the first couple times I used it, I veered off too, and then you you always veer off into your block, which is what you don't want to do. Okay, so now at this point, see my stabilizer is still on here, and I just had it glued on, so now I'm ready to remove my stabilizer. And depending on the block, um, this block, I might take some of it out of the inside. Um, some of those that have the words and stuff, I just leave the stabilizer on the inside of the block. This one's a little bit more open, so I might take a little bit of it out. I certainly will take it all out the edge because I'm gonna I'm gonna be quilting there. And I'm gonna have to take my scissors and get these little corners here. Okay, I might take a little bit of the middle out. Let's see how this one comes out. Sometimes it doesn't like to come out of the center too well but it makes it kind of stiff if you don't take some of this inside out too. And so I do take out as much of the stabilizer as I can get. I don't always take all of it, but like this big roof section I might take out if it comes out okay, just to make it a little less dense. And there's plenty of applique stuff in there, so it'll be fine. Okay, we'll take a little bit more of that out. But we won't be quilting in that area anyway, so if we don't get it all out of there, that's fine. I'll take a little bit more out. That's better. It's not going to be quite so stiff then. But the, the first two blocks, those little signs, there's so many words in there. I, d I just left the, cut, the stabilizer in the center because it was fine with all those words in there. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, so there's our block. I remove my stabilizer so that when I go to quilt it, I don't, won't be quilting through the stabilizer. And yeah, I think I might take a little bit more of that stabilizer out. Okay. And then it's trimmed to the six and a half inches. And like I said, I trim it with the, the stabilizer on because it just makes those edges stay nice and straight. It's harder to trim if, they, if after you pull it off because then they get a little curly and it makes it a lot easier to trim with its flat. So, okay, so there is our block. And that's my last block. Hopefully that, hopefully you'll uh, have as much fun as I did doing this. I really, really enjoyed this a lot. So this was a really fun project and it's been so easy and it goes very quickly. So I'm gonna move this back over here. Are there any questions? How do you store, how do you store ghost? How about a class on a bag, yo, huh? Gail, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to translate that for me, hon. <laughs> I'm not sure <laughs> what that means. Something about store or something. <laughs> I'm confused. Oh, the you mean the a bag for the rulers, maybe? Is that what you're talking about? Okay, so. Hope next week what we'll do is we're going to talk about um, the assembly. I'll kind of talk you through the assembly. I'll probably have my top all done. And um, then we will talk about um, the assembly of the top. It's very easy. And it starts on page, there's good pictures too. Um, there's, it starts on page, the assembly starts on page um, 11. And you sew it together in sections. Oh, for the rulers, yes. So people have been asking for a bag for the rulers. So yes, I would like to do a bag for the rulers. I'm gonna do that right after the first of the year sometime. I've got a pattern that I did myself, but I've gotta figure out all the measurements again. It's been a while since I've made it. So yes, I will do a bag for the rulers. Cause it's nice to have, I did like a project bag that has a clear plastic front. 
it has like a clear plastic front and then it's um, made with those um, Pioneer Woman uh, placemats in the back. So it's all quilted. It's really cute. So, okay. So yeah, so the, um, the, the sewing together, we'll go over this next week. We'll talk about the sewing together in the little sections and then we're going to do some quilting. I'll show you how to put the board, you know, the ends on and you put some little ruffles on the ends. This is where you have to you have to put the you put the whole middle together, and then you do the put a ruffle on. You put the ruffle on with your organza, and then you put the the end parts on these little end pieces on like that. And that's what we'll do next time. We'll work on that, and then we will do some quilting. And I did quilting differently on this one. Um, I did some decorative stitching, and I kind of had a plan. And you can kind of do whatever you want, but I kind of planned it out a little bit. So I'll show you what I did. Okay. And um, then the last week we will put on all of our embellishments. We got to put the little girl's dress on and, and um, the buttons and all the little bows and these yo-yos. So we'll make a yo-yo in class, the last class. Okay. All right. So are there any other questions? So everybody can be working on their blocks get their blocks done and start sewing their design together and um, then we next week we'll do the assembly part and the quilting so okay so is there any other questions and remember I do have some of those other things up they're gonna be up on the website in the next couple days like if you want the yo-yo maker and stuff oh yeah um, Jan I've seen people do that you can cut them off of the the project bags that you get at the events and then you then you can add fabric to the bottom um, I actually made a bag I don't think I have it close enough that I can show it to you I can put a picture up but I made a bag for mine that's a project bag that has a clear front so you can see the rulers in there and I made it out of one of those pioneer woman um, placemats and it worked out really well so so that that would be good because it's big enough for the rulers to put in there so so I thought that's what I was planning I just haven't gotten to that one yet <laughs> okay all right, so it's about getting close to 7.30, so I'll see everybody next week. And if you have any questions or anything, or if you want the yo-yo makers, you know, just message me or something or text me and let me know. And then I will hold them for you, and they will be ordered this week. Um, those of you who had orders from the event last weekend, they should be here Tuesday or Wednesday is what they told me. So I sh I'll be getting in touch with you about that as well. So, um, and then we got Kimberbell Club this weekend. And then um, we'll have Kimberbell Club the second, the first weekend or second weekend of December again. So, okay. All righty. Thanks, everybody. Have a good evening.